Well, we can cross from there to East Jerusalem. It's part of the West Bank. It's under Israeli occupation since 1967. France 24's Luke Schrego is there. Luke, there have been Friday prayers in East Jerusalem this morning. It's from conflicts in Israel and Palestinian territories in the past. During a crisis, it's after prayers we see anger pouring out onto the streets. What's the situation there at the moment? Well, we're here at uh, the main entry uh, for the East Jerusalem uh, Old City. Now, just behind the walls that you can see behind me is the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound, one of the holiest sites in Islam. And Israeli police have been controlling entry, as they tend to do when uh, the, the situation gets remarkably tense. You may just be able to see, if I move aside, some of the police uh, who've in fact, move out of shot behind me. They've been controlling access, searching people coming in and, and out. Now, this is what uh, the Palestinians have been calling uh, a day of anger. It's uh, the third national day of mourning following the hospital uh, strike in Gaza uh, earlier in the week and uh, the third day of a national strike. Now, we have seen some minor clashes around uh, certain quarters of East Jerusalem with Israeli police using water cannon to try and disperse people, push them on using a chemical additive that, uh, that really stinks uh, to try and keep them uh, out of the way and uh, disperse people. But it is all part of this uh, tense situation that you're seeing all across the West Bank where anger's really been mounting since uh, October the 7th and Israel's retaliation on Hamas uh, in Gaza. But Israel knows very well that it cannot afford to lose control of the situation in the West Bank. Uh, its occupation is uh, helping it uh, from allowing any kind of attacks to go forward. If it, if it loses control of the situation there, it would see what's being widely called in Israel a third front in the conflict. Now, of course, Palestinians are already angry over uh, Israeli uh, occupation. And they're only just being further incensed by, uh, the, by the situation in Gaza. So the question is yeah. uh, when or if uh, things will reach some kind of breaking point. Look, it's worth reminding those watching right now in Gaza, controlled by Hamas. Hamas, the militant wing of the organisation carrying out these atrocities on the West Bank, the bigger Palestinian territory. We're talking about uh, the uh, Palestinian Authority there, led by Mahmoud Abbas. There have been protests against him. You've been in Ramallah in the last 24 hours. I think in the last week, Luke, 13 days, have been something like 60 deaths to Palestinians reported there. What's the situation like there at the moment? Well, uh, into Ramallah and beyond, in fact, and the Palestinian, the Palestinian Authority's health ministry is now reporting over 80 dead across the West Bank with uh, well over 1,300 uh, wounded in, uh, in violence since the outbreak of hostilities on October the 7th. Now, 13 of those died in the Tulkarem refugee camp alone on Thursday. Uh, there was a raid there by the Israeli army and the situation de de degenerated. Now, these raids aren't new. They've been going on for around about a year and a half, but it's led to yet further Palestinian fears of uh, some sort of uh, potential joint operation, not just in Gaza, but in the West Bank as well. Now, elsewhere, there's a continuing violence between Palestinians and Israeli settlers. The situation between them has never been smooth, but uh, things have seriously deteriorated since October the 7th. We were in uh, the town of Kusra uh, just on Thursday. We met a family that had lost five, uh, five of its relatives, uh, three in clashes between Israeli settlers between Palestinians and Israeli settlers and two more at uh, the funerals the next day. Now, the Palestinians are accusing the Israeli settlers of stealing their land and, and trying to push them out. Uh, we went to speak to uh, settlers who were, who were not all that far from Kuzrin, the, the, near the settlement of Yitzhar. Now, they say that it's always the Palestinians who attack them first and that they're, they're just defending themselves. One man uh, has a pistol in his home. He has uh, an assault rifle from uh, the military. He's allowed to have one since he's completed his military service, but he's now teaching his wife to shoot. And it's all part of this uh, real degeneration in the situation and a toxic, dangerous cocktail of fear and mistrust, uh, even as you look further west where the situation in Gaza has really never been worse. Luke, thank you for the context in East Jerusalem. Our correspondent, Luke Schrager.